classification of solids now if you look at diamond and glass we can see that both are solids but if you look at them at microscopic level we can see that there is a difference in arrangement of constituent particles in diamond the particles are arranged in an orderly fashion whereas in glass they are completely disorganized based on the order of arrangement of constituent particles the solids are mainly classified into two types crystalline solids and amorphous solids let us discuss about crystalline solid in a crystalline solid the constituent particles such as atoms or ions or molecules are regularly arranged in a definite pattern for a long range here the arrangement is so regular that by just knowing the arrangement at any one site we can very well predict the arrangement of other sites in other words there's a regular pattern of arrangement of particles which repeats itself periodically over the entire crystal the examples of crystalline solids are sodium chloride diamond solid iodine gold quartz etc now let us discuss about amorphous solids the arrangement of particles in amorphous solids is not in an orderly fashion sometimes in amorphous solids we can find few tiny orderly arranged portion in between non orderly structures since they are very small in number they cannot influence the overall structure due to this the overall arrangement of the particles in the amorphous solids is distorted the examples for amorphous solids are glass rubber and plastics etc now if we notice carefully the glass windows of very old historical buildings we will observe that these glass panes are thicker at the bottom as compared to the top of the window this is because as the time progressed some of the molecules on the top of the glass flowed down due to gravity and accumulated in the bottom making it thicker please note that this process is very slow and takes hundreds of years due to this ability of amorphous solids to flow like liquids amorphous solids are also called as super cool liquids or pseudo solids let's differentiate between crystalline and amorphous solids the first difference is melting point in crystalline solid the arrangement of particles in every portion is same due to this every portion of crystalline solid melt at same temperature therefore crystalline solids have a sharp melting point whereas in amorphous solid every portion of amorphous solid is different from its neighbor due to this every portion will melt at different temperature therefore amorphous solids melt over a wide range of temperature the second difference is anisotropy and isotropy crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature it means that physical properties are not same in all direction if we consider this particular direction the particles are all blue if we consider this direction we have alternate arrangement of red and blue now if we consider this direction the arrangement is again alternate but the distance between them is more due to the difference in arrangement of particles in different directions physical properties such as electrical resistance refractive index thermal expansion etc have different values when we measure in different directions whereas amorphous solids are isotropic in nature it means that 
various physical properties are same in all the directions if we consider any direction the arrangement is completely irregular due to this the physical properties like electrical resistance refractive index thermal expansion have negligible variation in different direction cleavage with a knife when we cut crystalline solid with a sharp knife we get a clean cleavage and smooth new surfaces whereas when we cut an amorphous solid with a knife we get irregular surfaces now let us classify crystalline solids crystalline solids can be classified into four different categories depending upon the type of constituent particles and the nature of attractive forces operating between them they are first one molecular solids second one ionic solids third one covalent or network solids and the last one metallic solids firstly let us take up molecular solids in molecular solids the constituent particles are molecules depending upon the nature of molecules these solids are further classified into three types non polar molecular solids polar molecular solids and hydrogen bonded molecular solids what are non polar molecular solids in non polar molecular solids the constituent particles are either atoms like noble gases such as helium neon argon etc or non polar molecules like h2 cl2 i2 ch4 etc generally they are liquids or gases at room temperature and they exist as solids at supercool temperature in these solids the electron cloud is symmetrically distributed and the molecules does not have any polarity sometimes these atoms and non polar molecules lose their symmetry in electron cloud distribution for a shorter time and produce instantaneous dipole these dipoles distort the electron cloud of the neighboring atom or non polar molecule including dipole moment in them now electrostatic force of attraction between these instantaneous dipoles are called as dispersion forces or london forces due to the presence of weak forces these solids have low melting point and boiling point let us study about polar molecular solids in polar molecular solids the constituent particles are polar molecules like hcl so2 etc the molecules of these solids are held together by dipole dipole forces of attraction due to the presence of dipole dipole interactions these solids are soft and their melting and boiling points are comparatively higher than those of non polar solids but still as these solids do not have very high melting and boiling points they exist as gases or liquids at room temperature under ordinary pressure now let us study about hydrogen bonded molecular solids in hydrogen bonded molecular solids the constituent particles are molecules which contain hydrogen atom linked to highly electronegative atom such as fluorine oxygen or nitrogen of neighboring molecule this link between hydrogen atom and highly electronegative atom of its neighboring molecule is known as hydrogen bond and the hydrogen bond is represented as dotted lines due to the presence of strong hydrogen bonds these solids have higher boiling and melting point when compared to non polar and polar solids these solids are poor conductor of electricity and they exist as volatile liquids or soft solids 
at room temperature and pressure let us consider metallic solids in metallic solids the constituent particles are metal ions and free electrons metals have a tendency to lose electrons and becomes positively charged ions these group of positively charged metal ions are called as kernels and the electrons can easily flow throughout the metal crystal like water in the sea these mobile electrons are attracted by the positively charged ions and holds these ions together the attractive force that holds the kernels and the mobile electrons in the metallic solid is called as metallic bond due to the presence of strong metallic bonds the metallic solids have high melting points and boiling points the free electrons in these solids are responsible for high electrical and thermal conductivities of metals in fact the color of certain metals are also due to the presence of these free electrons some of the examples of metallic solids are copper iron aluminium silver etc let us discuss about ionic solids in ionic solids ions are the constituent particles in these solids there is a three dimensional arrangement of cations and anions that are held together by strong electrostatic force of attraction as a result these ions are not free to move and are closely packed and hence these are hard and brittle solids ionic solids possess high melting and boiling points being ionic in nature these solids are soluble in polar solvents like water but insoluble in non polar solvents like ether ionic solids act as insulators in solid state but in aqueous solutions or in molten state they act as a very good conductor of electricity here the question is why are ionic solids very good conductors in the molten state and not in the solid state in ionic solids the electrical conductivity is due to the movement of the ions however in the solid state the ions are in fixed positions and they are not free to move however in molten state or aqueous solutions the individual ions are free to move and when potential difference is applied these ions act as a charge carriers and become good conductors of electricity some of the examples of ionic solids are sodium chloride zinc sulfide magnesium oxide cesium chloride etc now let us discuss about covalent solids these are crystalline solids in which the constituent particles are non metal atoms linked to adjacent atoms by covalent bonds throughout the crystal structure as a result network of covalent bonds are formed due to large network of covalent bonds these solids are also known as network solids these solids are very hard and brittle and have extremely high melting and boiling points these covalent solids due to the absence of free ions act as bad conductor of electricity one of the most common examples of covalent or network solid is diamond where each carbon atoms are linked together by four covalent bonds to give a three dimensional structure however there is one exception whose properties are quite different from the other covalent solids let us study about that exception and the exception is graphite though it is a covalent solid unlike other covalent solids it is soft 
and good conductor of electricity. This exceptional behavior of graphite is due to its typical layer structure. In graphite, carbon atoms are arranged in different layers. We know that carbon is tetravalent in nature and has four valence electrons. In each layer, one carbon atom is bonded to three other neighboring atoms within the same layer. The unbounded fourth valence electron of each carbon atom remains unbounded and is present between the layers. This fourth valence electron is free to move within the structure. When potential difference is applied, these free electrons act as a charge carriers and makes graphite a good conductor of electricity. The force of attraction between each layer of graphite is very weak. Due to this, different layers can easily slide over the one another. This makes graphite soft and good solid lubricant. Best examples of covalent solids are diamond, silicon carbide, silica, etc. Welcome back. It's time to solve some numericals on the chapter, the solid state. Okay. And the topic is introduction, that is amorphous and crystalline solids and classification of crystalline solids. So let's take up some questions here quickly. The very first question is, yes, which of the following exists as covalent crystals in the solid state? And the options are phosphorus, iodine, silicon and sulfur. This question has been picked up from IITJE question paper year 2013. Okay. And what is the answer? Yeah. Look here. Here, phosphorus, iodine, sulfur and silicon. All are, yes, non-metals, but phosphorus exists as actually P4, right? Iodine as I2 and sulfur as S8. So, all these come under molecular solids. Whereas silicon, okay, just like carbon, has the ability to undergo self-linking, okay? That means silicon having four valence electrons can form four covalent bonds like this. One, two, three, four with the surrounding silicon atoms, correct? So, since you can see a network here or uh, so many covalent bonds, such a solid comes under covalent type of solid or network solid also. Remember, therefore the answer is silicon, okay? SI is the answer. Shall we go to the next question now? Right. Which one of the following is a covalent crystal once again? And this question has been picked up from KSE, that is Karnataka CET 2011 question paper. The options are rock salt, ice, quartz and dry ice. Yes, my dear friends. Rock salt is NaCl and NaCl is an ionic compound. Therefore, NaCl comes under ionic solid, right? I'm showing you the other three options, why they don't come under covalent crystal and then I'll go and take the right answer, okay? Instead of going straight to the right answer. What about ice? Ice is solid water or water in the solid state. Therefore, this comes under molecular solid. Exclusively, this belongs to which type? Hydrogen bonded molecular solid, isn't it? Whereas a dry ice is nothing but solid carbon dioxide. This also comes under molecular solid, but it is non polar molecular solid. So all these three are ruled out. And what is quartz? Quartz is SiO2. We have studied this under covalent crystal. Therefore, the right answer is C. Quartz, okay? Option C. Okay, friends, thanks for watching. 